But first, Labour and opposition parties are threatening to launch proceedings for contempt of Parliament unless the legal advice given by the Attorney General to the Prime Minister on her Brexit plan is published in full. So let's talk now to uh, the man behind this, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, the uh, Shadow Brexit Secretary. Thank you for being on the show Not all. this morning. So just explain what is it you're trying to do here? Well, as you've just said, in nine days' time, Parliament's got to take probably the most important decision it's taken for a generation. And it's obviously important that we know the full legal implications of what the Prime Minister wants us to sign up to. So we had a debate about two weeks ago in Parliament where we said we need the full legal advice from the Attorney General, the final advice. Um, at the end of that debate, Parliament ordered the government to produce that advice. Now, it is exceptional to have that advice produced to Parliament, but that was the order. The government at that stage, two weeks ago, had the opportunity to vote against that order, and they didn't, they abstained. So there's that order. Um, the government now says we're not going, or looks as if it's going to say, we're not going to comply with the order. So, as it were, having pushed Parliament away for weeks and months, if it's now moving into the territory of ignoring Parliament altogether and breaching an order of Parliament, then we're getting into very, very deep water. And you're talking about contempt of Parliament proceedings. I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> what, what can it actually do? Can you force the government to publish it? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I should say is I don't want to go down this path. I said to the government two weeks ago and I said to them last week, do the right thing. You've been ordered to produce this advice. Just produce it. If they don't produce it tomorrow, then uh, we will start contempt proceedings. This will be a collision course between the government um, and Parliament. That then has to be debated in the House and um, an order can be made of contempt. Now, as I say, I don't want to go down this path. With nine days to go before this vote, we shouldn't be uh, dealing with contempt of Parliament. But at the moment, for the government to say, on the one hand, we're not going to vote against the order being made, and then to turn around, if it does turn around tomorrow, and say, but we're not going to comply with the order, is to get themselves into really deep water. The government has said that it will publish a summary of the yeah. legal advice. I mean, why is that not good enough? Why well, do you need the full <laughs> hearing? Because there is an argument, isn't there, that it's important for the government to be able to have yeah. honest and frank conversations with their legal advisers. Of, of course it is. And that's why the convention is that the Attorney-General's legal advice is not disclosed, except in, in exceptional circumstances. And these are exceptional circumstances. Now, when we had that discussion in Parliament, um, I was offered a summary. Now, um, having been a lawyer for many years, I know I've seen a lot of summaries of legal advice, and summaries um, are not as good as the full legal advice, and, and they tend to leave out the bits that um, the author of the summary doesn't want people to know about. So we said no to a summary. We said we want the full legal advice, and that was then what we voted on. And, and, and at the end of the debate, the Speaker asked whether the government wanted to oppose that order, and they chose not to. So I think you'll have Brandon Lewis on uh, later, maybe ask him why they didn't vote against the order if they now say they shouldn't have to comply with it. You mentioned there that you have been a lawyer. Obviously, you have been a lawyer for you know, a, a very long time. Um, how many times have you made your legal advice public, your private legal advice to clients? Well, uh, on a number of occasions, lawyers make their advice public, but we're talking about a different issue here. We're talking about the Attorney-General's advice to the Cabinet on the legal implications um, of the agreement that the Prime Minister wants us to sign up to. I accept that it is exceptional to have that disclosed. It has happened in the past, but it's, it is exceptional. That's why we had a debate in Parliament to say, is this the sort of case where it's so exceptional that it should be disclosed? And at the end of that debate, um, the House could have divided. We could have, the government could have voted against it, but it didn't. So it can't come along now and say, well, um, we didn't vote against this order, but now we don't want to comply with it. I mean, is there also an argument that we effectively know what that legal advice is going to well, say? <laughs> well, this is the thing. I mean, I, uh, this morning, on the front page of the Sunday Times, you see that whilst the Prime Minister and the Attorney-General, on the one hand, are saying MPs can't see this advice, um, leaked bits of the advice are now uh, getting into the media um, and that can only have come from the Cabinet. This advice has only been with the Cabinet. So you've got this situation where somebody in and around the Cabinet who's seen this advice has got bits of it to the Sunday Times. So the journalist and the editor of the Sunday Times knows more about this illegal advice than I do. Um, this really is so unacceptable. Um, now, we've got this key vote in Parliament yeah. um, coming up. Um, more than 100 Conservative MPs indicating that they're not happy with the deal on the table. So I want to know what you're planning to do if Theresa May 
loses that vote. Will you call a motion of no confidence in her? Well, we've got nine days to go. We'll have to see which way the vote goes. But uh, it looks like a considerable number of um, Tory MPs are going to vote against it. It looks as though your DUP are not and, and, and the opposition party is not. So uh, I think the Prime Minister, as we all know, is, is going to struggle between now and that vote. Um, and people sort of praise her resilience at the moment. I don't think this is resilience. It's just ploughing so on what regardless. Are you, what will you do in that it, it, circumstance? It, if, if, if she loses that vote, the legislation that we've already passed says she must come back to the House and make a statement about what she's going to do next. Now, technically, she's got 21 days to do that, but she'll probably come back the next day, so we need to see what that is. But it seems to me that if the Prime Minister has lost a vote of that sort of significance... Um, then there has to be a question of confidence in the government. So will you uh, seek to move that? I think it's inevitable that we will seek um, to move that. Obviously, it'll depend on what actually happens in nine days. It'll depend on um, what the response is. But um, if she's lost a vote of this significance after two years of negotiation, um, then it is right that there should be a general election because, um, but for the Fixed Term Parliament Act, the convention was always, if a government loses what's called a confidence vote, something of such significance, then that government has to go. Um, you, you clearly want to uh, see a general election. That's been you know, Labour's policy for, for a long time. Um, but I'm, I'm keen to press you on the second referendum yes. question as well, because um, it does appear, you know, from a, an observer's uh, point of view, that Labour's position has been shifting, that you've been warming to the idea of a second referendum. Is that something that you believe is right? Yeah, let me just um, set out how we thought this through, because we had a, a good discussion about this at our party conference in September, and we tried to look at the decisions that we would have to make. A good discussion. Make. I mean, it was a, a slightly confused discussion, wasn't it? Let's be honest. No, it was, that, it, it was a good discussion. Of course, there's different views and there a lot of views um, over the two years. Of course, there are. But what we wanted to do at conference, what we succeeded, is say, what decisions have we got to make in what order? First is, what are you going to do about the deal? Where we're at that stage now, if it's not good enough, we'll vote against it. So that's decision number one. If the deal falls, um, then the next question is, are you going to call for a general election? We've just dealt with that. Obviously, if that doesn't happen, we need to press on to other options, um, such as a public vote, because um, having gone through the first two options, we need to look at what would happen then. And at conference, that's what we decided we would do. We can just have a look at what John McDonnell said uh, on this uh, this week. Uh, the Shadow Chancellor said, if that's not possible, a general election, we'll be calling upon the government then to join us in a public vote. That's the sequence, I think, that will inevitably go through. So, do you agree with John McDonnell then that it, it could be inevitable? Well, I think what back jo second. John is Reverend. going through exactly the same process um, as me, um, looking at, uh, as he says, if a general election is not possible, then options such as a public vote um, will have to be uh, looked at. And that's what we decided at our party conference. Would, Obviously, you like, would you like there to be a second referendum? I would like to have something far better than we've got at the moment. This deal is a bad deal, and, and, and frankly, to have got to a situation where at the end so of would, the negotiation... Would, would a second referendum be far better than where we are at the minute, then? Well, we'll have to see when we get there, but it's far better than this deal. Um, here we are, almost at the end of the negotiating period, with a deal which is, it looks as though it's not going to get the confidence of Parliament. That is a huge failure, and the Prime Minister's run the clock down. So if we get to a question of a public vote, if we get to a question of a referendum, it'll be because the option of a deal that I think could have been negotiated has been taken off the table by the Prime Minister, who will have failed to put something before Parliament that we can have confidence in. So, in a sense, she's pushing these other options by the failure to have got um, the option of a deal that Parliament could support. If... if a second referendum does happen, what do you think should be on the ballot paper? Well, we're going to have to decide that um, as a parliament if we get to that stage, but um, I've always been very clear that the option of Remain ought to be on that ballot paper. How about the option of No Deal? Should that be on as well? Well, I would be worried about that because I do think No Deal would be catastrophic for the country, and I don't think people have necessarily thought through all the implications of No Deal. If you've got No Deal, you've got no trading relationship with your most important set of trading partners. But you've also got no security arrangements, no arrangements for dealing with counter-terrorism. Before I was a Member of Parliament, I was Director of Public Prosecutions, and I was the UK rep in Eurojust, which everybody will be pleased to know is where we share information about terrorist activities, etc. The idea of getting to a stage where we're not participating 
in those sort of arrangements, I think, is something that, whether you voted leave or remain, you wouldn't want. So we shouldn't be casual about no deal. It has huge uh, 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 risks for our country. But just taking what you're saying there, I mean, some people would say if the two options on the ballot paper were remain and Theresa May's deal, then that's not really reflecting what many people feel. Well, I'm not, I'm not stating a fixed position here. We're not at that stage um, of the exercise. Um, we're at the first stage, which is obviously um, the deal. All, all I'm pointing out, and it's a point really for um, the vote in nine days, um, is that the option of no deal or going for no deal um, carries huge risk for our country. I, I don't actually think that this Prime Minister um, will move to a no deal situation. She knows the risks. She, she's very serious about counterterrorism and security. I don't think when she stands up, if she loses this vote, that she's likely to say, I'm now going to take the country off the cliff, I'm going to go to the no-deal scenario. And then, just finally, um, a little later on the show, we'll be hearing from Nick Bowles, who's pushing for this yes. idea of a kind of Norway plus staying in the single market. I mean, is that something that you think Labour could support? Well, uh, obviously, we'll have to hear what Nick says about it. He's put it in a number of different ways. This idea of a Norway... I, I mean, I went to Norway to study the Norway model, as it's called, for four days. Um, and I didn't think it would really work very well for the United Kingdom. It obviously works well for Norway. And when it was put as a proposition to Parliament, um, it didn't get a majority, and the Prime Minister says she's not interested in it. But so, could you consider it, then, or is it something that you, you just don't think will well, work at all? Well, at, at the moment, we need to see uh, quite how it's put, but, but at the moment, I'm not sure that it's um, something that's very uh, attractive. But I think what you're seeing now is um, that as we run into this vote, people are saying, well, what other options are there? I think the person who needs to answer that question is the Prime Minister. Okay. What Although, is her at the same time, B? you could argue as well that she's been, uh, you know, slightly hamstrung by a divided parliament uh, as well. So, uh, well, she you... had the snap election and lost her majority. So, I mean, okay. it's, it's not, you know, just parliament against the Prime Minister. Actually, she's the author of her own misfortune. Okay. Uh, so, Keith Starmer, thank you very much. Thank you.